Hey guys, welcome to another video for anatomy and physiology. In this lecture video, we're talking about your olfaction or your sense of smell. So this deals with cranial nerve number one, if you remember that. So your olfaction or your olfactory bulbs lie just inferior to your frontal lobe in your brain. So let's take a look. Let's take a closer look here. So here's your olfactory bulb, right? And I have here shaded or kind of faded is your ethmoid bone. Here, let me actually show it. So there, Let me get a, it's a little bit more defined there. So this is your ethmoid bone. I'm gonna remove your brain, I'm gonna hide it. And so let's take a superior look at this ethmoid bone. Now, if you, if you recall from previous lectures in the skeletal system, uh, your olfactory hairs go through what's called the ethmoid bone, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, your cribriform plate. That's a part of your ethmoid bone. So let's zoom in here real quick. And you can see all those little hairs. Oops, let me back up just a little bit. So you can see that the hairs kind of go through the cribriform plate and all those little holes there. And you can see another one right there. All right, so now these tiny hairs, they go through the, the cribriform plate and then they go and they come outside into the, uh, the nasal cavity. This is the only part of the nervous system that's actually fully exposed to the outside. Now, unlike your visual, um, your visual sense, uh, as I, I mentioned in that video, your retina, the retina is the only part of the nervous system that you can actually see from the outside, but this is the part of the nervous system that's fully exposed to the outside. And because of that, in fact, let me show you a different, a different image here. So these, these cilia are exposed to the outside in the nasal cavity, and every 60 days or so, these cells die off and the whole new regenerate, a whole new set regenerate. So they're, they're constantly getting you know, all the all cold air, all the, you know, the dust that's coming in, the, the hot air, uh, you, you name it. These, these cells are exposed to the harsh environment of the outside and so they constantly die off. Now, this doesn't happen with other parts of the nervous system, especially regenerating this quickly. Uh, some, some do regenerate, but they usually take months or even years to fully recover or some don't regenerate at all, like in your spinal cord. So inside of these cells, so this, this is, uh, and unlike your taste buds, so these, like your taste buds, these cells are engaged by, by molecules. Your taste buds are engaged by food molecules. These are engaged by air molecules, and then action potential will shoot up into the olfactory bulb and then uh, all, all the way through the olfactory tract and then into the various parts of the brain. So like I said, these are engaged by odor molecules, but unlike taste buds, taste buds are epithelial tissue. Okay, I know we didn't spend, a, I don't, I know we didn't spend any time on uh, the sense of taste because of, uh, of the issues going on with the virus and everything, uh, but these particular hair cells are, um, olfactory hair cells are neurons, okay? Now, you know, you, you might remember it with hearing, you had the stereo cilia, stereo hearing, the, the cells that are engaged by the tectorial membrane that, that kind of move it around. Well, molecules actually, like a lock and key, a key has to go into the lock and then you turn it. Likewise, in a similar fashion, these molecules are engaged by these, hel these cells. These um, order molecules will come and engage it and then the action potential will start off and shoot up into the olfactory bulb. Now, something to keep in mind is that these these cells, and there's millions of these cells, each of these cells uh, are differentiated. They, they, they are engaged by a particular type of molecule. So just like the key to your house will only open the key to your house, or the key to your car will only open your key, uh, your, your car, uh, likewise, only specific molecules will engage these, uh, these cells. Now in these cells, you see that these, you have like these elongated cells that are supporting cells. So these cells are kind of holding everything in place. These are, elong these are uh, ciliated columnar cells, if you remember that from uh, back in earlier in the year. And embedded in these columnar cells are stem cells that help regenerate these, these hair cells that die off. Um, so inside of this particular layer, actually let, let me just finish up right here on this outer layer. This outer layer is, is covered by a, a really thin layer of mucus that helps to protect it from uh, you know, dust particles and such. And that mucus you're constantly clearing out, it kind of falls behind your throat and you, <clears throat> you kind of clear it out and you swallow it. And then your stomach acids kill bacteria and all kinds of other foreign objects that you inhale all the time. Uh, like that oak pollen that we get here in Texas that's so prevalent. Um, so these hair cells 
uh, oh, so these hair cells are supported by these, uh, these hair cilia, sorry, these cilia are supported by these cells, olfactory cells, and you can have anywhere from 10 to 20 million of these cells, and each of these cells has anywhere from 10 to 20 cilia themselves, okay? So you have a lot, okay? Your, your, your sense of smell, your sense of smell is incredibly uh, sensitive. Your, 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 your sense of smell can be engaged by anything uh, from uh, just a few parts per trillion, okay? So for every trillion air molecules, it'll only take a few odor molecules for your uh, sense of smell to be engaged, okay? Now, having said that, uh, it's it's not as sensitive though as you know like your cat or your dog for example which have way more uh, cells than even we do or even like a rat that has you know an enormous amount of cells so these cilia these cilia that are down here at the bottom go into the hair cells that are in the ith the inner cribriform plate that's part of the ethmoid bone and then into the olfactory bulb and the olfactory tract now something to keep in mind about this is that your olfactory sensation is is very well integrated through through different parts of the brain like your limbic system or your hypothalamus so your limbic system is kind of like dealing with your emotional response to things so you, there there is a literal emotional connection to the things that you smell so when you come home after a long day and you smell something that's very familiar like your favorite meal it'll actually invoke and release endorphins that make you feel good and happy uh, likewise, in the hypothalamus, it will help to release uh, different types of hormones. So, for example, when a woman is in ovulation, um, uh, for like, the response like, that, that a male will have is that uh, it's been shown that when a woman is in ovulation and she releases various types of pheromones, uh, that will initiate a response in the male that will cause the male to release more testosterone. Okay, uh, And then for a female, for example, you can have what's called the dorm effect where um, after a while, uh, women in dormitories can synchronize their periods uh, due to the fact that um, uh, that these pheromones that they release uh, throughout, um, throughout a certain period of time. So um, let's see, one more thing that I'd like to mention about. So as I mentioned, so uh, as, a, as an odor molecule, will, it, the odor molecules easily go through the mucus. They, they engage the olfactory cilia. And then an action potential will then get fired up into these neurons. And then you see here that there's a group. Uh, you see a, a different type of neuron that's uh, synapsing with your olfactory cells. And each of these groups here are called the glomeruli or glomerulus. Uh, you'll see that term again in your, um, in your renal system, a glomerulus. So all that basically means is that you have a different, you have a synapse here. So one, this neuron passes on that action potential and it synapses it into a different neuron in the olfactory bulb, and then it fires that into the olfactory tract. Now again, keep in mind that each one of these cells is initiated by a specific type of odor molecule, which means that each one of these glomeruli likewise is engaged by a different type of uh, odor molecule. So your olfactory system is very sophisticated, uh, and uh, the innervation of it in the olfactory bulb also likewise and it's integrated and networked through various parts of the brain to give you the different responses that you get. Um, and oh, and last thing to mention is that these action potentials are engaged by sodium and uh, calcium ions that, that pass on, propagate that action potential. Okay, well, um, I think that does it for, um, for this particular lecture on your olfactory, your sense of smell. Thanks for watching and good luck in your studying.